Board of Supervisors voted to support the entire racial justice and law enforcement realignment policy package. Joining us to explain what this policy package entails is District Attorney Summer Steffen. Summer, so good to see you this morning. Nice to see you, Lauren. So let's talk about this package. There were three main elements within this uh, reform package, and uh, it, we'll kind of break them break them down uh, one by one. But let's just start with an overall of what this package looks like and how it's going to affect your office. There are exciting parts to this package that we have advocated for for uh, several years. They came out of our blueprint for mental health reform. And uh, I know that I, I've been in touch with uh, moms and families that are very excited about expanding the mobile crisis response teams uh, countywide. We had begun down this line looking at different pilots, but uh, I am uh, very happy to see the complete commitment uh, of the entire board to this uh, mental health reform, which is much needed. As you know, Lauren, 54,000 calls that involve uh, mental health, families in crisis. And uh, this should not all fall on the sh uh, shoulders of our incredible police and sheriff's departments. And I, and I want to make sure that, that everyone's clear on this. Um, the mobile crisis response team allows trained mental health clinicians, not law enforcement, to respond to nonviolent service needs. And the key part of that is nonviolent service needs. And the, the difficulty, and I, and I say this having been involved in, in personal experiences with this, uh, with a loved one in a mental health crisis, you're not always sure what is going to turn into a violent situation. Situation. So how do we judge when we send those mental health professionals versus when we send somebody who may be able to de-escalate the situation but also answer what could become a very violent situation? You really hit it on the nose, uh, Lauren. This is a very complex issue. So what it's going to require is a tiered response where you have trained dispatchers, 211 potentially the access uh, crisis line that are working together on risk factors and criteria because those 54,000 calls many of them uh, would not have allowed a community-based health response team alone without law enforcement because of the violence that sometimes comes along with some mental health illnesses, especially when people aren't in treatment. Um, so one of the things that is key to this success is the training and the tiering approach that's gonna work. We already have a head start because San Diego is the home of the first PERT teams. The, and those teams have responded to over 10,000 calls. So we have a baseline and we have input from all stakeholders when we held uh, those forums we were able to gather a lot of information so uh, we don't have to start from scratch and uh, i believe that we're going to move forward with uh, supervisor fletcher's proposal with all of the pieces that all the supervisors had put in place to support them Another aspect of this package I want to make sure we have time to touch on is creating an office of equity and racial justice uh, for the county. Can you tell us uh, about that office and, and really its, its job for the county? Well, I think it's in formation, but it follows in the footsteps of the Human Relations Commission uh, that the board just established. Um, and uh, it, after Supervisor Leon Williams, and I get to sit on that commission, and it, it really is going to be another step. It's information, but I think the key to this is to do everything in our power uh, directly and, and systematically to make sure that we address racial bias and bias of any form in any part of our systems. And because it has to be intentional, this is why the formation of these boards, we can't just let it happen organically because we know that if we don't intentionally 
fix things, they're not going to be fixed. So it is a step in the right direction, working with everything else that we're doing correctly in our county and fixing things that we can do better. Yeah. And uh, finally, uh, there was uh, strengthening the Citizens Law Enforcement Review Board Authority and independence. Can you talk about to this aspect of strengthening this office? I mean, this is, I think, a, a critical part for a lot of the calls to to change and hold accountable people who are um, out of line in law enforcement. I, I do believe that that additional transparency and resources provided to this independent review board is very, very important. You know, um, our law enforcement officers are in a position of trust, just like medical boards and other things where there are those positions of trust. So having expertise and having an independent review to be sure that when we have any bad actors, we immediately eliminate them. And I can assure you that uh, there is nothing more that all of the excellent law enforcement officers want than make sure that they do not have bad actors within the force. Summer Stefan, thank you so much for your time this morning. Our signal's breaking up a little bit, but uh, I know we'll have ongoing discussions about uh, police reform and once these uh, offices are, are created and strengthened for the county. So uh, looking forward uh, to following up on this topic, but appreciate your time this morning.